Our topic for today is, Intellectual Revolutions That Define Society. Human beings have embarked in scientific activities in order to know and understand everything around them. In the study of the history of science and technology, another important area of interest involves the various intellectual revolutions across time. Let's start with scientific revolution. Scientific revolution was the golden age for people committed to scholarly line in science, but it was also a deeply trying moment to some individuals that led to their painful death or condemnation. From religious institutions who tried to preserve their faith, religion, and theological views, some rulers and religious leaders did not accept many of the early works of scientists. It also marked the birth of science as a discipline and as a field of inquiry and gave birth to the development of the scientific method. It is the period of enlightenment when the developments in the fields of mathematics, physics, astronomy, biology, and chemistry transformed the views of society about nature. The ideas generated during this period enabled the people to reflect, rethink and re-examine their beliefs and their way of life. Scientific revolution is very significant to Human development, societal transformation, transformed world of ideas and explanations of the natural world, formulation of scientific ideas methods, strong foundation of modern science. Next is the Copernican Revolution, it refers to the 16th century paradigm shift after Polish mathematician and astronomer, Nicolaus Copernicus. Let's start when Claudius Ptolemy stated that the planets, as well as the sun and the moon, moved in a circular motion around the earth. He called it geocentrism. In geocentrism, the sun and the moon's revolution explained the existence of days and nights. His geocentric model was widely accepted by the people and was one of the greatest discoveries of that time. The Christian Church adopted many of its assumptions like the idea that the earth was the center of all and that man was the most important of God's creation, with domineering power over the earth. Another is Aristarchus of Samos. He used eccentric trigonometric measurements to calculate the relative distances of the sun and moon in the 3rd century BC. He was able to find out that the sun was very large, and this inspired him to suggest that the sun was a more likely pivot point for a movement of the universe. In his work, Book of the Heavens and the Earth, he demonstrated the lack of real proof that the Earth was static and vehemently argued that there was no reason to think that it was not in motion. Nicolaus Copernicus, a Polish mathematician and astronomer, introduced heliocentrism. The center of the solar system was not the Earth, but actually the Sun. The idea was first rejected by the public, because their religious belief had taught them that the Earth was created first before all other things. In his work, Commentariolus, he postulated that, if the Sun is assumed to be at rest and if Earth is assumed to be in motion, then the remaining planets fall into an orderly relationship whereby their sidereal periods increase from the Sun as follows. Mercury 88 days, Venus 225 days, Earth 1 year, Mars 1.9 years, Jupiter 12 years, and Saturn 30 years. Epicycles are little circles whose centers moved uniformly on the circumference of the circles of larger radius. Concept introduced by Copernicus to regulate the speed of planetary motions on certain paths of their orbit. The contribution of the Copernican revolution is far-reaching. The birth of modern astronomy started scientific revolution which resulted in the transformation of society's thoughts and beliefs. The Copernican Revolution marked a turning point in the study of cosmology and astronomy making it truly important intellectual revolution. Another one is Georg Joachim Redicus, a German mathematician. He traveled to Warmia and became Copernicus' student and assistant in 1539. He published the first widely disseminated view of the Copernican system, Narratio Prima. 
contrary Tycho Brahe, a Danish astronomer, he illustrated that the Copernican model did not adequately describe planetary movements. According to him, planets revolved around the Sun, but the Sun and the Moon remained revolving around the globe. Geoheliocentric system. Johannes Kepler, a German astronomer, analyzed the observations of Tycho Brahe enabled him to introduce the law of planetary motion. Kepler enumerated law of planetary motion. First, the path of the planets about the Sun is elliptical in shape, with the center of the Sun being located at one focus. This is called the law of ellipses. Second, an imaginary line drawn from the center of the Sun to the center of the planet sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time. This is called the law of equal areas. Third, the ratio of the squares of the periods of any two planets is equal to the ratio of the cubes of their average distances from the Sun. This is called the law of harmonies. Next is Galileo Galilei, an Italian scientist. In 1610, his views of the different phases displayed by Venus and the presence of moons orbiting around Jupiter convinced him that the heliocentric theory was right and was ultimately expressed in his dialogue concerning the two chief world system. Another intellectual revolution that defined society is Darwin's revolution. Through Darwinian revolution, the development of organisms and the origin of unique forms of life and humanity could be rationalized by lawful system or an orderly process change. First is George Cuvier, a French naturalist. In 1796, he suggested that certain fossils such as those of mammoths or giant sloths were the remains of animals that had become extinct. According to him each species of living things remained fixed and unchanging between each disaster catastrophe it is called catastrophism. He became famous after the publication of QVA's preliminary discourse. Next is Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, a zoology professor in France. According to his work, Philosophy Zoologique, living beings evolved from simple beginnings through increasingly sophisticated phases, resulting from a complex force. More frequent and continuous use of any organ gradually strengthens, develops, and enlarges that organ, while the permanent disuse of any organ weakens and deteriorates it also gradually until it finally disappears. The organ's greater power was then passed to the offspring, a phenomenon that became famous as inheritance of acquired features. Next is Charles Lyell. According to him when the Earth was continually being formed and altered over long time periods by different processes, such as wave erosion and volcanic explosions that were the same as those happening today it is called uniformitarianism. Thomas Malthus, an English demographer, described in his work, an essay on the principle of population, how human populations could increase rapidly while food supplies could not multiply the same way and the product was a struggle for existence. Charles Robert Darwin, first scientist to suggest that plants, animals, and any other living organisms are not fixed and unchanging or immutable on the origin of species by means of natural selection. In this book, Darwin introduced the theory of evolution, which posited that populations passed through a process of natural selection in which only the fittest would survive. The theory became very controversial as people perceived it to be contradictory to the church's teachings that the source of life is a powerful creator. Organisms have the ability to adapt to their environment and would gradually change into something that would be more competitive to survive, evolution.